title of uh, my sermonette today is Take Time to Pray. And I want to start out a little bit like Brian did this morning. Um, you know, we're, we're coming into that time of year, you know, we're just about ready to kick off the fall holy days with the Feast of Trumpets coming up here this week. And, and then Atonement, of course, and the Feast of Tabernacles on the last great day. And God always seems to. We always get an inkling that God wants to do things during this time of year. And he, he works powerfully at these at these at his feast days, at his appointed times, and we don't want to be a hindrance to what the Lord wants to do. Our hearts and minds need to be in the right place. How do we prepare our hearts and minds? Well, we spend time in, in fellowship and prayer with the Lord. Satan's going to do anything he can to distract us, um, to just, just to prevent our growth and try to thwart God's plan, whatever that may be for each, each one of us. I'm speaking about this today because I deal with this issue a lot, so don't feel like I'm, don't take it personally, but if you have the same issue, please do take it personally. Um, you know, rushing around six days a week, just trying to get your earthly tasks accomplished, and then sliding in on two wheels Friday afternoon or Friday evening to the church, stopping just before Sabbath, and then when Sabbath is over, rushing right back out to your earthly tasks, neglecting fellowship and prayer with the Lord, that's not a sustainable Christian walk. Let me repeat that. That is not a sustainable Christian walk. We need to take the time daily, brethren. Jesus himself took the time to spend with his Father. If we don't, we'll starve to death spiritually. Mark 1.35 says Jesus rose early and went to a solitary place to pray. Luke 5.16 says Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. So he went off, you know, in places of solitude, spent time, no distractions, just went out, spent time, quiet time with the Lord. If Jesus, Jesus needed this, excuse me, then how much more do we need it? This is what sustained him, and it'll be, it will be what sustains us. Jesus really believed that prayer works. If you, you're going to do what you believe. You can say you believe anything, but your actions are going to bear that out. Because whatever it is you really believe here, your actions are going to show it. And Jesus' actions did show that he believed in prayer. Uh, Matthew uh, 21, 22. All things you ask in prayer, truly believing, you will receive. Now that's not in context with the modern consumer doctrine, brethren. This is asking things according to God's will, not to get personal gain or riches. In John 15, 7, John 14, 13, and 14, and Mark 11, 24 are all parallel scriptures. Um, I'd like to go over to Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. <clears throat> it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it'll be opened. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he not give him he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven 
give what is good to those who ask him. Now, back up in verse 8, it says, For everyone who asks receives, and for he who seeks finds, and him who knocks, it'll be open to him. Uh, just flip over to Luke 18, 1 through 8. That's, we all know that. It's the parable of the uh, widow and the unjust judge. Now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart, saying, In a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she kept coming to him, saying, God, or excuse me, she kept saying, Give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he, will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? I, you know, that parable is just, it's, it's telling us that we need to be persistent in prayer. You, you don't just, if, if you're praying about something that's, super important, you're not just going to bring it up once and forget it. You know, you need to keep asking, keep seeking God. And just take this time daily to, to be with him and to draw near, especially during this time of year. Jesus tells us to pray, but through all these examples, we can see that he practiced what he preached. He, he prays he practiced prayer himself. He knew the effectiveness and power of prayer, but what's prayer really for? Is it just so we can take our shopping list before God every day? Absolutely not. Prayer is our tool. It's our means by which we can build a relationship and have fellowship with our Lord. Brethren, don't reduce your prayers to nothing more than a shopping list. Have a conversation. Make it a time of sweet fellowship with the Lord. That, that's what he desires, and, and that's what we should desire, is just to be there with him, drawing nearer day by day. You know, if you had a friend that only showed up when they needed something and you never really had any fellowship with them. Uh, they just showed up to get things from you. That would probably be a short-lived uh, friendship. And we don't want our relationship with God to be that way. Taking our needs to the Lord is a part of prayer, of course. But a small part and our prayer should really be about the fellowship and the time spent with the Lord. First Chronicles 16.11 says, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. Ephesians 6.18 tells us, Pray in the Spirit at all times, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So we can bring all kinds of things before the Lord. Um, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, It 
says, My people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. And that's one of my favorite scriptures, and I think probably it's just because where we're at in this country right now. You know, when I read that, I, it, my mind just goes, you know, I've got a picture of, of everything that's going on, all the perversion and the, everyone turning their backs on God as a nation today here in this country. And what could happen if they did what this verse says, just humbled themselves and turned from their wicked ways? God would heal our land. I, I just get a vision of, of, you know, what it could be like. The, you know, it would almost be like the kingdom. Of course, nothing's going to be that good, but um, compared to what we have today, it would, it would just be amazing. And uh, f my final scripture, I'll leave you with this, brethren. James 5, verse 16. The last part of the verse says, an effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Praise God. Praise God.